Hello everyone, how are you? This lecture we are going to discuss phenolic and aldehyde glycosides. So before I start with the lecture, I will go through the learning outcome of this chapter. So at the end of this uh, lecture or lesson, you will be able to define phenolic and aldehyde glycoside. Not only that, even alcoholic glycosides. And you will be also able to outline the botanical name, family name, uses and mechanism of action of salicine, propylene, coniferine, arbutene, leucovanilin, and also you will be able to explain the commercial preparation of vanillin. So first we will go through uh, basic understanding of basic understanding of what is uh, or what are simple phenolic or alcoholic or LDH glycosides. As the name indicate, this group of glycosides okay, contain either phenolic, alcoholic or aldehyde functional group in their a glycon part. So when phenolic a glycon gets attached or uh, conjugated with the sugar, it becomes a phenolic glycoside. Or in other words, or similarly, when a aldehyde containing a, a glycon part gets attached with the sugar molecule, it becomes an uh, aldehyde glycoside. And most importantly, all of them are derivative from the shikimic acid pathway. We will see some of the examples. So, from the shikimic acid, uh, the phenylalanine forms, which then converts into cinnamic acid. Cinnamic acid then gets converted into halicine. If you look at the structure of a glycon part of halicine, it is an example of aldehyde glycoside. If you break the bond between the egg glycon and the sugar, okay, it's a example of aldehyde glycoside and it's also a type of O-glycoside because the linkage atom between the egg glycon and glycon is the oxygen. So halicine can further con convert it into salicine. If you look at the structure of salicine, okay, salicine is an example of again alcoholic glycoside. Okay. Another example of simple phenolic glycoside where shikimic acid gets converted into hydroquinone. Hydroquinone, upon attachment with sugar, it forms arbutene. Arbutene is an example of phenolic glycoside. If you look at the egg glycon part, egg glycon part contains phenolic group, okay, the, where the OH group is attached to the benzene ring. Last example, where you can see the shikimic acid converts into ferulic acid, ferulic acid then converts into vanillin. Vanillin, which contains an aldehyde group, functional group, okay, which then undergo uh, glycosylation through its OH group, where a sugar molecule attached and forms vanillin glucoside. So, vanillin glucoside is also an example of, uh, or most common example of aldehyde glycoside. Here you can see the egg glycan part contains the aldehyde group, that is C double bond O H. Now we will go through one by one different examples of alcoholic, phenolic and aldehyde glycosides and their role okay, or importance to human body. So first one is salicine, regarding salicine, it is mainly available in different species of willow bark like Scalic, uh, uh, Salix purpura, this is the example of plant, this is a picture of plant of Salix purpura and Salix fragilis and it belongs to the family Salicaceae. Now hydrolysis of this salicine can take place with the help of an enzyme known as emulsin which results in the formation of D-glucose and saligenin. So if you look at the structure of saligenin, saligenin is the a glycon part of salicine. Regarding medicinal uses, it acts as an analgesic, antipyretic and anti-inflammatory agent just like the marketed non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and this is one of the uh, marketed preparation which is available in the market. Next example is populine. Populine is nothing but a chemical it is a it is a benzoylsalicine that means if you look at the structure carefully here the benzoic acid you see the benzoyl group is attached to the sugar moiety through the CH2OH group of the sugar. So it is a benzoyl salicine and it is mainly available in the bark 
and leaves of popular species okay where the botanical name is populus deltoid this is the tree of populus deltoid the leaves and the, one of the picture of leaf and the bark of the populus deltoid it belongs to the family salicaceae the same family as salicine now here the hydrolysis of populin is uh, very important you need to uh, remember two points the hydrolysis of populin can take place under two different condition in presence of alkali or in presence of acid now do they give the same product uh, by undergoing hydrolysis either by alkali or acid let us see it's not for example uh, when the populin undergo hydrolysis in presence of alkali it results in the formation of benzoic acid and salicine that means it gives still a glycoside because if you look at the structure of salicine it's an example of glycoside because it is attached with a sugar molecule so only the benzoic acid is broken okay and if you get two products salicine and benzoic acid whereas hydrolysis under acidic condition it breaks the molecule completely into three parts and it gives rise to salicine benzoic acid and the glucose that means under acidic condition this salicine further breaks into the glycon part that is salicine and benzoic acid or in other word you can say both salicine and populin they both of them have the same uh, glycon part that is salicine so when salicine is attached with only sugar it becomes salicine when it is attached with the sugar plus benzoic acid it becomes populin come to the next example coniferin is also an example of alcoholic glycoside you can see and it is found in most coniferous plant you look at the structure of corn okay and it is mainly used for the preparation of vanillin next example is arbutin which is an example of phenolic glycoside and this is one of the most important example of this chapter uh, because of its medicinal importance we will see why it is medicinally so important so regarding arbutin it is mainly extracted from the dried leaves of arctostaphylos uba urushi so arctostaphylos uba urushi is the botanical name of the plant from where the arbutin which is a phenolic glycoside is extracted and it belongs to the family ericaceae now regarding the uses because of which it is so much important to study it has antibacterial properties and how it is consumed generally the leaves of ubarushi are traditionally brewed in tea okay and it has been observed that when you consume Uh, the leaf extract of uba urushi that contains the arbutin it helps you to get rid of the disease like urinary tract infection or it helps to elevate the uti not only that it can also inhibit the tyrosinase an enzyme which is responsible and hence it can prevent the uh, formation of melanin since it can prevent the formation of melanin it can be also used as skin lightening agent this is one of the market preparation of uba urushi which is available in the market next we will see the mechanism of action of urinary tract infection like how actually taking the uba urushi okay leaf extract as a with tea uh, helps to get rid of the urinary tract infection so when you consume the leaf extract okay brewed in a tea so actually you are consuming the arbutin indirectly so this arbutin when it goes inside the body it undergoes hydrolysis to form hydroquinone okay the first metabolite that is hydroquinone and glucose that is hydroquinone is the hydroquinone is the uh, a glycon part of arbutin so you can see it gets hydrolyzed with the help of uh, inside the plant it can it can hydrolyze with the help of 
uh, enzyme emulsin or inside the human body it gets hydrolyzed with the help of a dilute acid to hydroquinone. Now this hydroquinone, if you look at the structure properly, it has two OH groups because of the presence of OH group it can directly enter to phase two metabolism of a uh, human body, okay, where it gets further converted into hydroquinone glucuronide because it undergo conjugation reaction with glucuronic acid. And interestingly, it is this hydroquinone glucuronide when it travels through the urinary tract, okay, it prevents the adhering of bacteria that is, uh, you know, present in the area of the tissues. As I mentioned, this metabolite is eliminated from urine and during the journey of this uh, hydroquinone glucuronide through the urinary tract, it will prevent the bacteria from adhering to the tissue in that area of urinary tract. As a result, what happened? It results in the elevation of UTI. In other words, yeah, okay, let us see what happens. When you consume arbutin, it first converts into hydroquinone, then hydroquinone converts into hydroquinone glucuronide, and it is that hydroquinone glucuronide when it travels, consider my hand as a urinary tract, when it travels through the urinary tract, it will take away all the bacteria that is attached to the tissue of the urinary tract, and in that way, it helps in elevating the urinary tract infection. Okay. So this is the mechanism of arbutin, which is very important. Next example is glucophenylin, which is also known as avenin. This glucophenylin is mainly available in the fruits or pods of vanilla uh, planifolia. This vanilla planifolia, also known as Mexican or Bourbon vanilla in commerce, it is also available from another species that is vanilla tahitensis. Okay, in commerce com or commercial, it is also known as Tahiti vanilla. Okay, so you can see the, the picture of vanilla pod, and it belongs to the family Orchidaceae. Now, hydrolysis of this glucovanilin, okay, it results in the formation of vanillin and glucose, or it gives rise to vanillin. Vanillin is the a glycon part of glucovanilin. Now here, I would like to mention two important points regarding uh, regarding glucovanillin and vanillin. So this glucovanillin is mainly highly abundant in the green vanilla pods, and this glucovanillin is actually bitter in taste as well as it is odorless. Whereas when it is converted into vanillin, it is the vanillin, okay, which is sweet in taste compared to glucovanillin. And it is the vanillin which is responsible for the vanilla order that you might be uh, consuming as part of ice cream or different cookies, vanilla flavor. The vanilla flavor is because of this uh, vanillin, not because of this, not because of the glucovanillin. You may tend to think since the sugar is attached to vanillin, the sweet taste is because of the sugar. It is not. It is because of the glycon part vanillin. And most importantly, when the Pots of vanilla tree, you know, it becomes brownish in nature. It has been observed that the brown vanilla pots contain a huge amount of vanillin as compared to glucovanillin, whereas the green vanilla pot contains glucovanillin. So you see the difference? Vanillin it's, it is responsible for sweet taste and vanilla odor, whereas glucovanillin it is it gives bitter taste, mainly available in green vanilla pot, and it is also orderless and if you look at the structure it contains a aldehyde functional group so it is a kind of aldehyde when the sugar is attached to through this oil it becomes aldehyde glycoside and most important use of vanillin is uh, they um, they're mainly used as flavoring agent and especially in bakery for the in uh, food items like ice cream, cookies, etc. Of course, there are many medicines or syrup, okay, where also vanilla flavor is being added, especially for when it is made for the children. Now, regarding the commercial preparation of vanillin, vanillin is mainly prepared synthetically from 
eugenol, conifery and guaiacol. So you see eugenol when it is treated with KOH followed by oxidation it results in the formation of vanillin. Similarly guaiacol also upon reflux with uh, sodium hydroxide influence of chloroform result in the formation of vanillin. Coniferin again when it is treated with you know the potassium carbonate okay potassium dichromate in presence of uh, H2SO4 it results in the formation of vanillin. Now before I finish my lecture I would like to ask two questions to just to check whether you remember the facts. Which of the following is alkali hydrolysis product of valine? Do you remember? I give you a clue. Alkali hydrolysis gives only two products whereas acid hydrolysis gives three product complete breakdown breakdown of the proline into three product so alkali hydrolysis product correct answer is a that is benzoic acid and salicine now second question which of the following plant extract can be used for the treatment of urinary tract infection this is the indirect way of asking the botanical name of the plant okay so the correct answer is actostrophilus uba urshi so the best way to remember U for UTI, remember U for U, it's well she for urinary tract infection. These are some of the references, textbook and supplemental books. And with this I finish my lecture. Thank you so much for your attention.